first of all, thank you so much for having me here. It's very nice to get the opportunity to present some of my work here today. Uh, in the conference program, it says that this will be a discussion of the roles of respect and love in animal training discourses. But I will leave love after it for the time being, and my focus will be on dog training. So the topic is respect in discourses of dog training. This paper is based in my research on the understandings of dogs and dog-human relations in present-day Norway, and it's very much a work in progress. In my PhD project, my focus is on the conflict zones that emerge when and where dogs and people meet. One of the topics I am exploring is dog training, as this is an activity with great potential for conflict both between dogs and humans, and between the different schools of training. However, this paper is also based in my relationship to my own dog. Every day I struggle with my own conflicting feelings regarding the unequal power relations between us. How can I balance the need for control with my wish for mutual love and respect? What does, it, what does respect mean? What does it mean to respect someone, to be respectful? And can a dog ever respect me? I'm not going to answer these questions if you <laughs> are hoping for that. Instead, I will give some examples of how dog people use and understand the concept respect and argue that, that an important change might be taking place in Norwegian dog culture. I'm not really sure, but I hope this is the case. And there's a lot going on in Norwegian dog training at the moment. The population of dogs is increasing, and so is the number of dog schools teaching dog owner owners how to train their dogs. As in the US, so-called positive training in general, and clicker training in particular, has made an impact on the dog culture. And this has led to verbal dog fights between the more traditionally oriented trainers and those who advocate reward-based training. In the traditional discourse, which in Norway often is referred to as leadership theory, respect is an important keyword. This respect should be mutual. The dog should respect the owner, and the owner should respect the dog. And the owner's respect is about taking the natural needs of the dog into consideration and treat the animal as it is, which is a dog. And according to the traditional discourse, a dog is a pack animal in need of a firm leader that makes sure that there are clear boundaries and consequences if these are overstepped. As one of the most popular traditional trainers write in his book, You Are the Boss, the lack of proper leadership is the root of almost all problematic dog behavior. If a dog respects you as its master, it will not disobey you. And if it respects you, it will not be aggressive, as aggressive behavior is seen as an attempt to claim leadership. So this was a dominating discourse in Norwegian dog training for decades, but it's uh, being challenged by positive trainers, mainly because these ideas, this leadership theory, is associated with the use of pain and punishment as training tools. So the following, example, the following examples are from the discussion board on the Norwegian website Kanis, which is a website dedicated to clicker training. And clicker training is a training practice that entered Norwegian dog culture at the end of the 1990s and is based on positive reinforcement. That is, as you are all probably aware of, rewarding the behavior you want instead of punishing the behavior you don't want. So this discussion, it's uh, almost 10 years uh, old, took place in 2004. Under the headline, Respect, a young girl describes how her dog is eager to learn and how it basically does everything she asks it to, but only if a treat is present. So she writes, she has no respect. It might be because I am a girl and the youngest, but I want a dog that respects what I ask of her and submits to me. It isn't fun when I want her to listen to me and she just ignores it and does exactly as she wants until she decides that 
Now I have to go before she comes and beats the crap out of me. <laughs> it is a golden retriever. She learns really quickly, but no treat, no respect. And then in uh, capital letters, this is not the way I want it. And then something interesting happens, because the founder of this website joins the discussion, it almost never does. And he's one of the main advocates of clicker training in Norway. And together with his wife, Cecilia Kuste, he wrote the first Norwegian book on clicker training. And actually, I think it's the only Norwegian book, clicker training. And, um, he's on, he answers this. Nobody does anything because they have respect for you. <laughs> Dogs do things either to get something they want, or they do things to avoid discomfort, yelling, etc. You are the one who must decide how you want to train your dog. Personally, I would think it very sad to have a dog that came running every time I called because it was scared for what would happen if it didn't. So here we have two very different understandings of the importance of respect. The person asking the question sees obedience as a sign of respect, which is in line with the views of traditional dog training. Morten Egtvet, the clicker man, on the other hand, claims that there is no such thing as respect at play when it comes to obedience. Behavior is simply a question of rewards and punishment. And in the discussion that followed on this uh, web forum, almost everyone seemed to agree that the problem of the disobedient dog was a result of suboptimal training techniques and not the lack of respect. However, they also seem to agree that dogs were selfish and opportunistic beings incapable of respecting anything or anyone, like in this answer. The only thing I can think of that could be seen as resembling respect from a dog is obeying the rules set by the owner, but not because it shows reverence or consideration Dogs do not think, think like this. They are much more selfish than that. Dogs are big egocentrics, and we smart humans have to use that to our advantage. And then, my next example is from a recent discussion on Kani's, the same website. This time, a person is asking about a dog that growls whenever they bend down over him. So, the person thinks that this is a sign that dog believes he is the pack leader, the master of the house, and uh, wonders how they can make him be more submissive. So again, we see the traditional notion of pack leadership and respect in the question. And as uh, in the previous example, the regular users of the web forum, they do not buy this. And now, respect returns to Kalnis. The following answer was, very typical for the debate. A simple measure is to show some respect. He does not like faces against his nose, and is telling you this in a decent way. <coughs> respect this, and the problem goes away. And then other users suggested training techniques that might make um, the dog more comfortable with people bending over him. And of course, mainly, behaviorist clicker training, as this was a clicker training website. So in this discussion, the problem was redefined from a problem with a seemingly aggressive dog to a dog who had problems with people bending down over him. Further, it was the human behavior that was defined as problematic, as it was in conflict with the dog's wishes. So instead of the dog being perceived as disrespectful, it was the humans who disrespected the dog, and the solution was to stop this and show some respect. In other words, it seems as the users of the Khanis website are not satisfied with the clear-cut behaviorist view where respect does not matter. They no longer buy Morten Egtvet's statement that nobody does anything because they have respect for you, but it is the humans who have this obligation and not the dogs. And in this last discussion, many of the participants referred to a book by a Norwegian dog trainer called uh, Turi Drugos. And the book is called On Tor Talking Terms with the Dog, Calming Signals. And in this book, Drugos writes that we need to protect our puppies, to allow them choices and to teach them with kindness. Only then will we really gain their trust 
a loving, allowing a relationship to develop based on mutual respect. So like the traditional dog trainers, Lugos is very concerned with respect, but this is a very different understanding of the concept. So I actually got uh, the uh, I interviewed to the Lugos. Uh, I asked her what she meant by respect between dogs and humans. And she said that respect means the same between dogs and humans as between humans. Respect for what they feel and manage. Respect for them as individuals with their own value. According to Rugos, respecting the wishes of the dog is what will make the dog respect your wishes in return. So in contrast to the selfish and opportunistic behaviorist dog, she stresses that dogs are beings that cooperate, that work together with humans, and who, that actually wish to work together with humans. So we have a very different notion of respect, and we also have a very different dog. But of course, outside of this paper, uh, it never happened like this. The traditional notions of respect did not disappear with clicker training for them to reappear as a new a transformed concept based in mutual love and understanding. So all these notions of respect coexist co in present day Norwegian dog training, dog training discourses. There has even been a backlash against the positive training, a backlash that generally is attributed to the arrival of dog whisperer Cesar Milan on Norwegian primetime television. Still, the Rugo's notion of respect seems to ga gain influence combined with the training practices based on positive reinforcement. In his introduction to Leslie Irwin's book, If You Tame Me, Biologist Mark Beckoff states that as humans we bear incredible responsibilities to be moral beings and to step lightly with grace, humility, respect, compassion, kindness, generosity and love in regard to other animals. Maybe the changing notions of respect in Norwegian dog training discourses represent a step in this direction, as these changes are intertwined with new understandings what dogs are, as well as new understandings of the relationships between dogs and humans. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure if this really is the case, if this, these things are changing, but I certainly hope so. Thank you.